I'm getting sick of sweeping with the biz. Follow me around with your moisture seeking mirrors. Hi, hi. hi. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, just quickly, I don't know if you noticed, there's a camera at the back of the room. Nobody ever noticed that. It's for me. It's, we're filming this show. For me. So. <laughs> so I can stay home alone and watch it. No. <laughs> I mean, if you ever have, um, I mean, this is your big opportunity, London, if you want me to remember you really well. Because <laughs> we're being recorded for sound, too. So just in case. <laughs> we're having ham tonight, are we? Hi, welcome. Good. Hi. 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 Is it w it's Wednesday? Today's Wednesday? I'm, I'm what to do on a Wednesday night. <laughs> um, usually I start the evening by telling you some little story that <clears throat> I've seen about town. You know, I've been watching you, London, yes. <laughs> the, best, the best story so far is I was sitting in a cafe, Sebastian's down the street here. Very expensive Northern European made sports coupe pulled up. And the vanity plate, you know what a vanity plate is, yes? The vanity plate read, num one. <laughs> I thought that was appropriate, actually. <laughs> huh. So, start the evening off. I have to introduce my crew. I have a crew, and I have a set. Hello. Um, my, this best actually, this is it. This is Scott. <laughs> Scott puts this little tissue on my water so that no dust gets in. <laughs> Woo, Scott! And um, this lighting, <laughs> all of this lighting is courtesy of Todd, who is a young, tight panted youth. <laughs> I've been building a myth around Todd. <laughs> it seems to be working beautifully. <laughs> I'm sir. So we start the evening off. I have to have a drink of water. We'll start the evening off with a performance art piece. This is deadly serious now. Can you see them? This is a sturdy pair of men's cotton briefs. This is what men call delicates. <laughs> Quickly now, a fashion tour, and not for the faint of heart, I might add. Right off the top, huge and nuclear resistant elastic. OK, now watch how big your belly can get. You know, women learn, a, women learn a life lesson about the elastic in their panties. Now, we may actually never use this information, but we are taught what to do in the event the elastic in your panties goes in a public spot. <laughs> say, just say, say, pretend, say, say, say. You're standing waiting for a bus, and without a moment's notice, the elastic in your panties abandons you, <laughs> and your panties fall to the ground. You are instructed, make no note. <laughs> Simply wait for the bus to pull up and then <laughs> One last note on the elastic aspect here. Um, they like to write little messages here on the elastic. This particular ticker tape reads, Mr. Brief. Mr. Brief, 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 Mr. Brief. Mr. Brief, Mr. <laughs> Say you're going to sleep with a man. Say. 
And uh, he's wearing a pair of Mr. Brief underwear. <laughs> it's not necessarily foreshadowing. <laughs> I love this part, especially because everybody's digging into grade nine lit here. Uh, foreshadowing. Uh. <laughs> All right, we move next to the leg area. There's one and there's the other. Now, they don't put elastic in the leg area of men's underwear. They put this very user-friendly kind of cotton ribbing action. <laughs> but as we all well know, after repeated washes, this area stretches out quite a bit. <laughs> Making way for the often heard summertime phrase, oh man, my bag is everywhere. <laughs> and you know, guys don't think we see them going, you know, All right, next, the pocket. There she is, and nobody's home. Now, I'm 33 and a half years old. I've lived on the planet Earth most of those years. And I learned just recently that men don't even use it. <laughs> and it's always on the right-hand side. Well, what if you're left-handed? <laughs> you crack your wrist off going in, or what? Maybe you invite the guy next to you to go in for you. <laughs> you know, if purses are ever outlawed, women could wear these and just put everything we need right in there. <laughs> oh, just a sec now, I've got to change, hold on. And last, certainly not least, this area right there. <laughs> this area right in here, right there, this area. This area is colloquially known as the basket. Yeah. Hooters <laughs> basket. <laughs> now, many of you women won't even recognize these all nice and flat like this, so. Um. <laughs> now? Wait, maybe you'll recognize them in their natural habitat. <laughs> oh, the <laughs> art is over. Now, on the front cover of Cosmopolitan magazine, there's a photograph of a woman. Helen Gurley Brown, who's the editor of Cosmopolitan. Have you ever seen Helen Gurley Brown? Does she not look a lot like Tutankhamen to you? <laughs> Do you notice they're never seen together? Anyway, <laughs> Helen Gurley Brown says that the woman on the front cover of Cosmo is a fair representation of the woman of today. <laughs> so there's always some woman on the front cover going, <laughs> well, that's a natural pose for women, isn't it? Maybe you found yourself in the same situation. <laughs> you know, you're standing in the bank lineup with your passbook and everything. And without a moment's notice, your body just like. <laughs> oh, and it gets better. Oh, it gets better. There was an ad last year. Um, they might reprise it because it was so excellent. It's a Beanman's gum commercial. It's a quick 30-second montage commercial of women in everyday situations. First shot, you see there's three women standing side by side, and they have like shoulder pads that need runway clearance, and they're all doing the woman walk. The woman walk, which is... <laughs> I always walk like that. Oh, there's the Instabank. Next shot comes up, there's a woman standing there going, she's hailing a fucking cab. 
Would you stop? I would not. And then you hear it. I'm a man. Yes, I am. And I can't help but love you. So next shot. Three women in high cut French bathing suits going for a run on the beach. I always go jogging with a wedgie. And the last shot you see is a woman applying lipstick. And then you hear it again. I'm a man, yes I am, and I can't help but love you so. And then you see the product, Beanman gum. Some things never need improving on. Well, have you ever tasted Beanman's gum? It tastes like wintergreen linoleum. It tastes just this much better than thrills. At least Thrills has the integrity to taste like soap. <laughs> and why are they selling this shitty, shitty gum and showing parts of women's bodies that have nothing to do with chewing? <laughs> yeah, we never see her take a stick of gum. <laughs> now, there's an ad right now on television. Maybe you have seen it. It's like, it's a going concern for me. I call it the wrapping pad ad. If you heard it's like, you're not slim, you're not flat. Why settle for a pad that's only that? <laughs> All right, and then they show you a shot of the pad. Correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't it look a lot to you like a gravy boat? <laughs> Maybe a nice surgical shoe, you know. <laughs> There's the other one, the other one. All right, stay with me here. It's a sanitary, th there's a sanitary pad, there's the eyedropper, and that blue water, <laughs> which we all have. And somebody's practicing their penmanship. <laughs> when, you know, you half expect to come home someday and the refrigerator's got all these pads on, it's like, I've gone <laughs> to the grocery store. And they're all stuck there with that adhesive back, you know. <laughs> there. Now, for some reason, all the women in the world are represented on television by 12-year-olds. I don't know why. I think the 30-year-olds are probably selling to pins or something. <laughs> anyway, there was an ad. These three teenage girls. First one says, are you sure they're for me? Second one says, did a teenager have anything to do with this? Third one says, maybe they're for my mom. Yes, always present slimmer, thinner, maxi thin. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for finally inventing a pad that doesn't make me look like I'm smuggling a canoe in my pants. <laughs> one ad, this woman is standing there. She's, in, she's an off-white woman. I don't know where they found her. <laughs> she's an off-white in an off-white room. She's got an off-white hairdo. That chignog. You know that, like, <laughs> yeah, it looks like a croissant on the back of your head. And she's got on an off-white suit. Hmm? And she's being handed children, and she's putting these children down on an off-white coat. She gets three of them free, like that, and the shot widens out to reveal a camera. Oh, she's going to take a photo of the children. Not a chance. She puts her hand on a box of latex tampons because the plastic applicators are so much more comfortable than the cardboard. <laughs> hey, I don't keep the applicator in there. <laughs> you can make them out of zinc if you like. <laughs> and she's wearing well, what's the rule, girls? <laughs> well, the rule very simply is this. Never wear white on day two. <laughs> Unless, of course, you'd like the chance that the back of your skirt looks like the flag of Japan. <laughs> now, we have
have to do my favorite one of all time, because this is my favorite one of all time. There was this woman. They show this woman. She's got auburn hair, and she's wearing tweed. I'll say she's a winter. <laughs> and she looks into the camera, and she says, they've got wings. <laughs> and her equally adroit friend says, oh, do they fly? <laughs> pads with wings, huh? The Pegasus of pads. <laughs> now, to lend a little scientific credibility to all of this, they drag up like a grid from NASA. And there's this grid, right? And right on there, there's a drawing of the old winged pad. And before your very eyes, it starts to flap like, whoa, 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 flicka, whoa. Off you go. How'd you get here? Well, I took a pad. You know, whenever they want to sell women sanitary products, they, they find some really robust brunette. And they, <laughs> she's got this like really serene look in her mouth. And she's holding a flower, walking through a field of daisies. <laughs> I never feel like that when I'm having my period. Why don't they drag up a shot of some like bloated dolphins on a beach somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> it's a well-known fact amongst women that when a group of women cluster together for a length of time, they will all have their periods at exactly the same time. You know this. You know this. I think this is exactly, now, this point, this point is best exemplified if you've ever gone to a restaurant where the waitresses who work there have done so for like 20 years. And you happen to like stumble in on that Wednesday, you know, it's like. <laughs> I think this is exactly why they won't let women into combat. <laughs> think about it now. Imagine a battalion <laughs> of armed premenstrual <laughs> women. <laughs> you want to fight? <laughs> I'll fucking fight with you. <laughs> and you know we would win. Now, I was born and raised in a small northern Ontario mining community called Sudbury. <laughs> Actually, Sudbury, I think, is better known now for its taxation department, don't you? So, but when I was growing up, Sudbury was only a mining community. Only a mining community was, you know, it was a lot of men, mining men. It was the kind of place where the men there well, the men were men. <laughs> and so, you know, the women there were men. <laughs> so in Sudbury, when a man asked you out on a date um, with words, <laughs> it was always to a bar because there wasn't anywhere else to go. Now, at the time of this story, there was still like the, the wall between the men's side and the ladies and escorts. Do you know of this? Yes? No. Oh, you're getting good at this. Now, quickly, a fashion note. I'm 18. I am resplendent in a pair of green wide whale howick cords <laughs> with a leg at the bottom about that big, a white pop top. Huh? Huh? So we sit down at the table. It's a round copper top table. You know of these. Yes? And uh, so I'm sitting there, and the guy's like, Who? Lucy? Who? This 
is affectionately known as letting the man order. <laughs> Overcomes Lucy, she's about 4'7", she can bench press 900 pounds with one arm. She's carrying an aluminum tray that is exactly the same size of the table. It has glasses that size, that shape, filled with amber liquid called draft. She slams a whole table's worth of alcohol on this table and leaves us. All right. Now in Sudbury, for a woman to be a man, you must drink toe for toe, drink for drink, shot for shot, beer for beer. But you must never, under any circumstances, appear drunk. <laughs> because if a man in Sudbury sees that you are drunk, he will jump on you and hump your leg. <laughs> It's as unattractive as it sounds. <laughs> so, the women there have learned to drink like Marines, but maintain a womanly demure. <laughs> but women know. Women know when one another are drunk. Women know. And here's one of the very first telltale signs. <laughs> The other one's way more obvious, eh? Well, <laughs> so there we are. We're drinking, we're drinking, we're drinking. And he's starting to look a lot better. <laughs> Cut to Sudbury, being a mining community, has a smelter. It's at the smelter where they take the rock out of the ground. That means nothing to any one of us. And it's through the smelting process they extract the minerals, the copper, the silver, the nickel some traces of gold and platinum and, you know, stuff like that. And they extract that from the, from the rock. So they take all that good stuff and they send that down to the United States of America. <laughs> and we Sudbarians, and I think more collectively speaking Canadians, are left with huge amounts of a useless molten rock called slag. <laughs> now, depending on production, they pour this slag into 200-ton cauldrons that are set on a railway track. And they take them out to a predestined hill. And you can actually phone INCO, International Nickel Company, and find out what time they pour the slag. And that's exactly what they do. These cauldrons simply tip their contents down these blackened hills. And from far away, it looks like, like rivulets of hot molten lava, like really controlled. It's quite, quite amazing. And the heat rises naturally, and it interferes with the atmosphere, and everything around turns like this orangey, hazy hue. <laughs> we Sudbarians take advantage of this man-made phenomenon to neck. <laughs> All right. We're back at the bar. We've been drinking. I mean, we're shit-faced. Way too drunk to walk. You know, we drive. <laughs> And he's got an excellent car. It's a duster. <laughs> Jacked up at the back. It's got flames painted all the way down the side. It's got the thrush woodpecker slammed on the side there. <laughs> you want him, I know. So we drive out and park at the parking lot overlooking the slag dump. Because you can't park at the bottom, you know. <laughs> So, um, it's a sofa seat, you know, sofa seat, three on the tree. And uh, so there we are. Now, bit of etiquette, just quick, quick etiquette. If you're ever there, say, say you're ever there. <laughs> Don't be necking before the slag pours. Oh, no, cool your lips. <laughs> Hold on to it. Wait for that slag to pour. Now that's ambiance. So I'm, I'm sitting in, the, in the, you know, the passenger side, and my eyes are kind of like doing this in my head, which is attractive for anybody, really. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, I wonder how he'll do this. Like, I wonder how he'll, like, you know, maybe he'll go. <laughs> or maybe he'll do that thing that guys do in the movie where they drag your face over with one finger. It's like, <laughs> well, I guess it's time to kiss him halfway to the pucker, you know. It's like. 
And I look up, and I see that they started to pour the slag. So I turn and go, hey, look, they started to pour the slag! <laughs> and he's on me. And we're naked, 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 we're naked. We're naked. And if you've ever necked in the front seat of a car, inevitably your face gets like smushed into the door and you get that knob. Ah! Anyway, everything seems to be going along swimmingly. We're necking away. And suddenly he starts to serpentine his hand up the back of my shirt like my sweater. Da 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 da. We're still necking, but my brain is like, dee 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 dee, skin to skin, skin to skin. Looks like he's going for the clamp bra strap. <laughs> oh, and he's not just happy to hang there, is he? <laughs> he starts doing this excellent maneuver. <laughs> Fucking thing. <laughs> Shit. bleeding from the spine. <laughs> like the guy's not a DeVry graduate, okay? And while he's like yanking my bra strap back and forth, it's like, ow, ow, they're not meant to travel. Oh. <laughs> okay, Sandra, this is an emergency situation. Think of something. So I think I'm doing like the womanly demure thing. Yeah, demure in Kodiaks. <laughs> And I just nudge him. I just nudge him away. Just nudge, nudge. <laughs> and then I undo my own bra strap. <laughs> and then I clamp my arms down for everything I'm worth. Aye, <laughs> you can have the strap, but you're no getting to the girls. The girls, <coughs> Hagen and Daz. <laughs> the bigger one got the bigger name. <laughs> I name them because men name their dicks. <laughs> I see this is not news to you. <laughs> Here's the best names I ever heard in my life for a man's dick. <clears throat> First one was The Humiliator. And the other one was Big Steve and the Twins. <laughs> now, I have a huge fear. My huge fear, I'm clamped down. My huge fear is that my bra is going to go spring or You know, when you open a woman's magazine and you see the body of a nude woman, they want you to believe that every woman on the planet has those little <laughs> those little ski jumpy tits. <laughs> right? With the nipple way up here somewhere. <laughs> Not me. I was blessed with a set of East Westerlies. <laughs> Once released from their cottony confines, they kind of go, oh. <laughs> Fuck, it was hot in there today, eh? I don't even notice that he's pushed himself all the way back over to the driver's side, and he's like, <laughs> he's mad. He's mad, and it looks like his feelings have been hurt. hard to imagine a one-celled being with hurt feelings. <laughs> 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 
And without a moment's notice, like, and he starts driving away. It's like a dirt road. It's like, whoa. So I jam my one hand up there. I do up my own bra strap with one hand. And we drive in silence. You know it, that silence that men make. It's not so much silence as it is the absence of sound. <laughs> I have always been really impressed how long they can hold their breath. <laughs> and you know women, ready to fill a void. And you know what I was thinking I was going to do? <laughs> we pull up in front of my parents' place. And he's like, I, um, um. Are you mad? <laughs> Maybe. Are you mad because I undid my own bra strap? Because that's what I thought you were trying to do. I was just trying to help you out. I thought you were having trouble. I was just trying to help you out. <laughs> I want to do it myself. You know, it took me years to figure out the right, you know, years later you think of the right line, which was, fuck, son, you could have stayed home and done it yourself, you know. <laughs> now, when I lived in Sudbury, I had a job at the Bamboo Gardens, the home of fine Canadian and Chinese cuisine. I had a very fetching outfit. You want to know about it immediately? The waitress outfit, the official waitress outfit for the BBG, <laughs> black polyester. Now, that good polyester, you know the one. <laughs> now, it was a V-neck with a notched collar like that, which had like um, a piping, gold piping on it. Short sleeve, but with a big hole cut out of it. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, the chicken balls. Oh, yeah? See anything else you like? I mean, <laughs> empire waist. And then the waist went in, and then it was the A-line. Huh? And I wore that with a white patent leather savage nurse shoe. <laughs> Sudbury has a huge Fren French Canadian population. Over 55% of the people who live in Sudbury are French speaking and French Canadian. Canada, by the way, has a huge French Canadian population. <laughs> with that said, one evening, my best friend Sherry and I decided to go and see a movie. And I'm actually very happy to tell you she is still my best friend. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> I'm sure she'd like it, but it's ruining my timing. All right. So one night, Sherry says, well, let's go to see a show. So I call up the Odeon Theater to find out what's playing. And I said, hi. Um, yeah, can you tell me what's on tonight? And the woman who answered said, Dwayne, tonight, Sylvester Stallone in Fis and Annie Owl. What? I, I'm, so, I'm sorry, can you hold on a sec? Just, I just got to get pencil and paper. I'm sorry, can you please repeat that? Oi. Stelvester. Uh-huh. Stelloni. Oh, yeah, okay. In fis. Okay. Piani owl. I, I, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? Honey, did, did you say honey? Jejilo. Ani owl. Okay. Honey owl. Thank you. Sherry said, what's playing? <laughs> Sylvester Stallone in Fis and Honey Owl. She said, oh, Honey Owl. I said, I swear, look, I wrote it down, Honey Owl. She goes, you know, that's weird, because I thought Annie Hall was playing there. <laughs> I said, Sherry, I must see this woman with my very own eyes. So we jumped in her dad's truck, we drove downtown, ran into the city center, and there at the entrance of the Odeon Theater, behind this like plexiglass containment with like a place for your hand, like a little wicked place, was the most remarkable being I had ever seen in my life. She was just perched on her Odeon stool. <laughs> she was wearing a very form-fitting Odeon outfit, cat's eyeglasses, and the biggest platinum blonde beehive hairdo <laughs> in captivity. <laughs> and she was just sitting there like this. <coughs> <coughs> can I help you? Yeah, 
Yeah, sure, a two for honey owl, please. <laughs> I was so fascinated by this woman. If whenever she would come into the bamboo gardens and I would pay whatever waitress's section she sat in so that I could serve her. Number three combination, fried rice, chicken balls, chow mein. <laughs> I, got, I actually got to know this woman. I would make, I, I wanted to be her friend. <laughs> her name was Louise Tranche Montaigne. Now, is there, is, there, is there a meaning to that at all? One, the first part, the, the tranche, that's like a slice, huh? tu comprends? Puis the last part, montagne, that's a slice of the mountain. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I used to go over to Louise's, and, <laughs> and Louise would sing for me. She fancied herself a bit of a chanteuse. Her favorite song was, Hey, did you happen to see the most beautiful girl in the world? And if you did, was it Louise Trash Montaigne? Her favorite expression was, Hey, don't press my nerve. Huh? <laughs> so one afternoon, I'm over at Louise's place. And I was, you know, complaining that I didn't have a boyfriend or something. Some reasonable facsimile. <laughs> I, I cut out all the box tops. Well, where the fuck is he? <laughs> and uh, Louise says, don't mind me saying it, but you're never going to get a man looking like that. I can give you some advice, huh? but I just don't give this advice to just anybody. Huh? <laughs> Écoute, Lou. First, go to the beauty parlor huh? and get your hairs done come so. <laughs> Make sure huh, when they do your hairs, they put a nice bang on the front, puis the kiss curl on the side. <laughs> that way you can buy that tape, huh? put them on. They last forever, huh? <laughs> Next, go to the Kmart huh? and buy a nice pantsuit. <laughs> you know the one I'm talking, huh? Tunic, huh? It's be the sleeveless. They have the gold button all the way down the front, come so. They're fake, huh? Don't worry, there's a zipper at the back. <laughs> the pants have the seam sewn down the front comes so. <laughs> and make sure to buy bleu. Bleu, huh? that way you can buy the matching eyeshadow. Huh? <laughs> OK, the ball. Go home, take your time, take a nice bath. But don't mess your hair, is it? Do what I do, take the toilet paper, I go around. <laughs> okay, take your time, get dressed nice. Nice, huh? Get dressed. Put on the shadow, then the blusher, speed the lipstick, and Kevin, you're ready to go to the Legion. <laughs> I never go to the Legion alone. Huh? That's the difference huh? between uh, just a woman and a lady. Huh? <laughs> go to the Legion with a friend. I always go with Salange. Huh? Go nice, go nice, huh? in the legion. Go to the bar, get one beer and get a glass. Don't drink out of the bottle like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Sit nice at the table. Put the beer and the glass down. Put the beer halfway in the glass, come so. Make sure to have a few cigarettes already rolled, huh?
And wait nice, wait nice. And when the man comes to ask you to dance, eh? Kabang! He can buy your beer all night long. <laughs> Louise had the most alarming success rate I have ever seen in my life. She was phenomenal, and given where she got them, it was no surprise they came in on chains, you know. <laughs> hey, Louise, he's really nice looking. Oi. I got him at the Legion, huh? Come on. Did you have a refreshing intermission? No. Yes? Did we lose anybody? No? A couple of guys. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. We have a scene change. <laughs> Hold on. I got a hair right on my eyelash. There it is. I <sighs> wonder where that came from. <laughs> <sighs> the only thing that I ever looked for in my whole life was love. I looked for one person to love and to have that one person love me back. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> When I was young, I, I asked my mom, you know, I, I mom, 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 <laughs> mama, mom, mama, how will I know I'm in love? You'll know. <laughs> no, what part of the question didn't you understand? How will I know I'm in love? You'll know. And we had a lovely mother-daughter conversation. <laughs> I moved from Sudbury to Toronto in 1980. And now we have like excellent travel log music with my luggage like bum bum da da dum bum da da dum. It was fantastic. There were men. Men, 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 men. It was like eye candy. <laughs> I got a job when I moved to Toronto as a bartender at the Nags Head Tavern at the corner of King and Young. <laughs> you know that it's been demolished. Do you know this? It's been demoed. I think the hand of God poured it down. You know? <laughs> anyway, at the time, I worked as a bartender and I shared the duties with a woman by the name of Lorna. And Lorna and I would watch the men come in and they were all beautiful. Now, I actually should preface all of this by telling you what the criteria for a man in Sudbury was. <laughs> it's very simple, very simple criteria. Hmm? Shirt on the top, <laughs> pants on the bottom. <laughs> Looking for something a little more creative? Oh, here's somebody with all his facial features on his head. <laughs> Baby! So there we'd stand at the bar, Lorna and I, and these beautiful men would come in. These men with like parts in their hair, <laughs> sweater and matching socks. <laughs> and we'd stand there and go, Lorna, Lorna, two o'clock, oh, two o'clock. <laughs> and you know, women do look at men. We do look at men. We just don't go, <laughs> We look, we use our eyes. Once up, once down. Whoa, did you see the basket on that guy? <laughs> I think it's that economy that makes us such good shoppers. <laughs> so one afternoon we're in there, we're in the old nags head and we're watching the pay show as we refer to it. And Lorna says to me, Sandy dear, can I see you down at the end of the hall please? We're down at the end of the hall Lorna digs into her uh, 
smock, and she pulls out a pack of Matinee King, and she's got a butt there she's been saving since lunch. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Sandy, dear. Them men you've been ogling, they're gay. No. No, please. <laughs> and I went into my, oh, what a waste phase. Oh, what a waste. And then I moved swiftly and unerringly into my, come home with me, you're sick, I'll fix you phase. <laughs> imagine some poor gay guy sitting in my kitchen in a high chair, me force feeding him chicken soup, you know. Are, are you straight yet? No. I call this my learn to lose period. So there I was. There I was. I was in Toronto. I was young. I was nubile. And I didn't know how to meet people. Didn't know. And for some reason, all the women in my world, all these bright, beautiful women, were single. And it's ugly. Oh, it's ugly when single women clan together. Because from afar, they kind of sound like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and you get a little closer, and they're all sitting around, looking off, smoking cigarettes, throwing scotch down their throats. Oh, it's ugly. <laughs> and it occurred to me even then, that they don't have square dances anymore, you know. And all these people dancing around, you know, all these like fresh scrubbed apple cheek boys leaning against a wall going, my, my, doesn't Linda Sue look mighty fetching tonight? <laughs> so how do you meet somebody? How do you meet somebody? Do you go to a bar, like a singles bar? Like, do you have a Pat and Mario kind of bar here? Like the loneliest place on the planet, right? Go to a bar, order something evil off the menu, like, I'll have a Rob Roy. And wait for some guy to burn you with a cigarette. Ow! Oh, hi! <laughs> I consulted Cosmopolitan magazine. Cosmo never tells you how to get somebody. Oh, but they got lots of suggestions on what to do when you've got someone. Oh, yeah, like, I got him, I got him. The little legs are kicking away. What do I do with him? I got him. There was an article in Cosmopolitan magazine entitled, The Eroticism of Bathing. <laughs> Don't be afraid to throw herbs, ginger, even lettuce in the tub. <laughs> well, get it up, Roy. There's two heads of romaine in there. <laughs> a shameful waste of crudités, don't you think? <laughs> and what man in his right mind is going to step into a tub with shit floating in it? <laughs> you know, Cosmo's got a running article in it entitled, Why Don't You? Dot, dot, dot. It's literally a list of activities for women because we don't do enough all day. <laughs> we do fuck all all day long. <laughs> I'm sure all of you are just like me. I stand around all day in a chenille robe eating bonbons. <laughs> they have suggestions like, why don't you wake up at five in the morning and clean your kitchen? <laughs> Okay, why don't you have a gift wrapping party? Okay, okay, why don't you hug him even if he's cranky? You know, chances are if he's cranky, I made him that way. <laughs> Now that's an activity. 
All right. It's desperation time. Desperation time. I responded to an ad in the Companions Wanted section <laughs> of a free alternative newspaper published in Toronto called Now Magazine. You have new respect for me now, don't you? <laughs> you have these, like you have a Companions Wanted, like you have the singles only thing here. Yes, you're the first audience who's actually admitted that they've seen these things. <laughs> Everybody else goes, no, what? <laughs> All right. Now, I should tell you that when I responded to the ad in the early 80s, they were still using whole words. <laughs> yeah. You know that there's these abbreviations now, it's like, <laughs> I'm thinking the whole time, buy a fucking vowel here. <laughs> All right. So, I've got the Now Magazine cracked open to the personal column. I got my Evelyn Woods School of Fast Reading handout, and I'm whipping down that column. Whipping and <laughs> there it is. It's a little ad, but it's funny. First prerequisite for me. First prerequisite, humor. No, I want to be with a grim man. <laughs> First prerequisite is humor. Way before having a dick. Because <laughs> you might have a dick and not know what to do with it, and in that case, we could both laugh. So it's a funny little ad, so I send off a funny little note, you know, because I can. <laughs> and I get back a letter, which is rather amusing, and he's inserted like his phone number. So I phone up the number, and he's not there, but his answering machine is on, and it's actually a fairly amusing machine. So I leave a few clever quips on there myself, <laughs> you know, because I can. And finally, this guy and I meet on the phone, and we decide to meet at a certain cafe for drink. All right. I'm standing in front of the mirror, and I've got on just a crisp white ensemble. <laughs> you know, I'm a winter. I can carry that, really. <laughs> and I'm putting on the shadow, the blusher, the lipstick, everything. And I'm out the door. I'm walking down Bloor Street, and it suddenly dawns on me. I've never seen this guy. I don't know why this crucial fact has eluded me up until now. <laughs> but I've never seen him. And then as I'm walking down Bloor Street, I start to reason that any one of these, like, critically ugly men could be him. Not, not knowing what he looks like, when I get to the cafe, I start making meaningful eye contact with every lone man there, you know, like... This guy stands up at the back of the room, turns around and goes, Have you ever seen a thing in your life? Have you ever seen a thing in your life that made you want to go, ah! But you could not, so you just stood there and went, We were standing there staring in abject fucking horror at each other like, heard what he was thinking, you know? A little hairier, we'll put a leash on her, take her for a walk. <laughs> I'm standing there going, is it possible for the human cranium to be so small? <laughs> oh, fuck! Fuck! Ah! And I'm standing there, like my feet haven't moved. <laughs> Run away, Sandra. Run away. And there's a voice. This voice, I don't know where it came from, of reason, comes up and says, now, Sandra. <laughs> oh, now, dear, I'm sure he's a lovely boy. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> All right, well, we're here. Let's go for it. Come on. Come on. 
Then one at a time then. All right, there. Good girl. We sit across from each other. We, are st we haven't even spoken a word. We're still like at each other. Luckily, at the time, I smoked heavily. I just lit the whole pack like. <laughs> he smoked too. We had a lovely smoke screen happening. Waitress came by. I have a case of beer. Just put it here. After about 25 of the most evil little minutes of my life, I went, look at the time. <laughs> I got to go home. Yeah, I'm so, I got to go home and um, um, smoke a ham. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get out of here. I'm on my way home. I'm having my little chat with the Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all the help at my family. Has you got to start like that. <laughs> and also, when it comes my time for a guy, pass me by. <laughs> I fucking had it with men. Because, you know, I was still on the pill for no reason. <laughs> so, I decided to be single. I decided to be single. Like, I had a fucking choice. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you read women's magazines, like the ones with the lady's face in the center and all these, like, like tantalizing little headlines that make you want to buy the magazine, like, the headlines like, the danger of finding the perfect sex partner. Oh, I'd hate that. <laughs> danger, danger, danger. <laughs> Inevitably, they'll have an article entitled something like, The Joy of Being Single. Got to be the biggest oxymoron in the world. <laughs> you know, military intelligence. You know. <laughs> Toronto life. <laughs> oh, you like that one better, huh? <laughs> so in these little articles on the joy of being single, they suggest ways for you to be better at being alone. And they say things like, don't be afraid to take brisk walks. <laughs> and don't be afraid to dine alone. Have you ever dined alone? Like purposefully gone out to dine alone? OK. You're bathed. You're clothed. You're upright, right? You've gone to the restaurant, and you're standing in front of the please wait to be seated sign, right? The hostess comes over with the menus, and she goes, Takes you to a table for two, puts one menu down, and then abandons you. The waiter comes over and says, can I get you a drink while you're waiting? For who, Godot? <laughs> and then he takes the other placemat away. <laughs> Suddenly the word pathetic lights up. <laughs> I would much prefer to stay home and eat over the sink. <laughs> Can wash your hands there too. It's everything. All in one, dining alone. Well, I envisioned my singledom a little more romantically. In my singleness, I was a little taller. <laughs> Willowy. <laughs> I love that word. Willowy. And I wore a lot of like white, gauzy, <laughs> cotton clothes. <laughs> a really a heavy wave action on this, you know, like. <laughs> and my hair was shorter and tawny colored. Now, I don't know what color that is. But in every Harlequin romance novel, <laughs> she had green flashing eyes and tawny hair. <laughs> I want it. <laughs> and I wore round tortoise shell framed glasses, and I could be seen sitting alone in cafes, sipping espresso with a twist of lemon, <laughs> reading Jean-Paul Sartre, nauseating myself to death. <laughs> and what happens? 
What happened? I made a decision, and what happened? I just turned my head for a second, and into my life walks this guy, the one. No, he was the one. How did I know he was the one? Because when I looked at this man, I heard, He was tall and lean and blonde and blue-eyed and funny and bright and articulate and younger. <laughs> you get them young, you can train them. <laughs> it's time to lie down now. <laughs> and his name was Frank. I fell in love with Frank. Now, I don't know about you, but when I fall in love, I give my brain away! <laughs> nobody, nobody, including single women especially, want to be around a woman who has just fallen in love. <laughs> because the sum total of her conversation is, and then you know what else he said? <laughs> and he's really funny, smart. Oh, gee, smart. <laughs> and he's so funny, so funny, you know what he said? Two cheeseburgers. So I was in love with Frank. And one day the phone rang. Hello? <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm fine, yes. <laughs> yes? No, I'm not doing anything. Sure, I can meet you for coffee? Yeah, in 15, that'd be great. OK, but, but what? Oh. You want to talk? Sure. OK. OK. See you in 15. Bye. No, you hang up. <laughs> so I meet him at the cafe. He's already there. He's already, got, like, he's already got a table for two, and he's ordered coffee. So I sit down, and he is there. He's very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> And he says, hi, um, thanks very much for coming. <laughs> no trouble. <laughs> says, um, look, look, um, there's no easy way for me to say this. Oh, then don't say it. <laughs> He says, um, look, um, I want to be honest with you. Um, and I, I've been doing a lot of thinking. And uh, it's not you. <laughs> but I just don't feel ready right now to make any kind of emotional commitment. <laughs> well. Sing along if you know the words. <laughs> I can't believe it. You know when somebody levels shit like that at you, you just half expect them to go, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it just goes, <laughs> hits you, and all the blood in your body. <laughs> <laughs> and you get that. <laughs> and I'm looking dead at him, and all I see is, I'm getting dumped and I'm deaf too. <laughs> that voice comes up again. She says, You don't let this bastard see you cry. I, I can't help it. I can't help it. Get up. I can't get up. Get out of here. I don't. I don't. To the door. Who is the door? I don't know where the door is. It's over here. No. 
out, please. Please, please, one, one of you changes his mind. He hasn't got a fucking mind to change. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, man. I'm ne ne never, ever going to get, get laid F -F ever again. <laughs> So where do you go? Where do you go when someone says, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not here for you anymore. I'm sorry you can't love me anymore because I'm not here for you. Oh, time's up. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I like to turn my head down the path of self-destruction. <laughs> Hi, liquor control board? Yeah, listen, do you guys take visa at all? <laughs> yeah, can I get a case of Jack Daniels, please? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, right, can I take a, I'll take a, yeah, carton of Camel, carton of Marlboros. Give me a, yeah, give, give, give me a carton of Lucky Strike shit ends, and uh, I'll take a flat of Snicker bars. <laughs> I'm digging in. <laughs> I'm digging in for stinky pajama time. Stinky pajama time. Maybe you know it. <laughs> it doesn't have to be pajamas. It can be bad track pants with the pills on them everywhere. <laughs> Regardless, it's a legged garment with a crotch way down here. <laughs> and you wear that with a completely mismatched top. It is this festive little ensemble that keeps water away from your body. Oh, we never bathe during stinky pajama time. <laughs> we never shave our legs during stinky pajama time. And if you're in there long enough, you can get that excellent kelp action happening on your legs. And... <laughs> Two weeks. Two weeks go by. I walk up and down the hall, crying smoking cigarette after cigarette, cradling a bottle of bourbon like it's a teddy bear. Sometimes a phone would ring. Uh -huh. Oh, hi, Maria. No, man, I can't go out. I've got to finish this bottle of bourbon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, fuck, I'm here. <laughs> oh yeah? Where did where did you see him? <laughs> oh yeah? Listen, Maria, um <laughs> Could you could you tell if he was with anybody? <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess it'd be hard at a party, yeah. Um listen, Maria. Uh, <laughs> Um, did it look like he'd been crying for two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> two weeks went by, and one day I got a note from my liver. We're leaving. <sighs> Whenever I want to take my mind off of making love, I do the laundry. I don't know why. Something about being in the basement with trolls, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, I'm still deep in stinky pajama mode. Oh, yeah. But the light at the end of the tunnel comes by way of a fresh basket of laundry I've just done. So the ironing board goes up. The iron starts getting hot. And I'm digging through the basket, and whose shirt comes out? So I lay it really lovingly on the ironing board. Okay, he will see that the shirt is not at his house. He will know it is here, so he will come and get it. And then he will see that I ironed it, and he'll say, Oh, Sandra, I should never have left you. <laughs> Because you're such a good ironer. <laughs> Never! Never has a 
a man gone for a woman because of her domestic prowess. Oh, Enid, what a shiny floor. I have such a boner for you. <laughs> and I'm ironing away and thinking, you know, maybe if I was way more excellent, he would not have left me. Yeah. Maybe if I was really, really excellent. And then, <laughs> fantasy number one. I get amazing legs. Excellent, excellent legs. The kind of leg that when you point your toe, there's a line of muscle all the way down. You know these legs because you don't have them. <laughs> I have them. And I'm wearing them to a party. And I'm sitting at the party like this, another natural pose. And I am talking to the most staggeringly beautiful man I have ever seen in my life. My God, this man is so beautiful. Uh, I mean, the only reason you'd ever throw this man out of bed is to fuck him on the floor. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Door swings open. Who's standing there? Frank, in a hydro parka. <laughs> and now he has his point of view. He looks down, and he sees that those amazing legs are punctuated by a pair of stiletto heels. And now the camera's kind of doing like a slow, steady pan up those legs. Oh, there's that little ankle, the turned ankle. There's the round of the calf, yes, the round of the calf, yes. And there's that little kneecap, yes. And just as the camera is about to reveal who it is, I am snapped out. I look, and the camera reveals um, a honey-colored blonde woman. It isn't even me. <laughs> she takes Frank's hand, and they go off. <laughs> oh, fuck, think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy number two. I get a Lamborghini. I get a Lamborghini. Also, by divine intervention, I'm given the gift of driving a standard. <laughs> well, it wouldn't do to have the $140,000 car lurching up the street, now would it? <laughs> so I'm in my Lamborghini. It's got a little tiny wheel, and I'm driving with every foot I own. <laughs> I'm... I'm changing gears beautifully, rowing through the gears, as they say. I'm doing a beautiful job, and I'm driving up Frank Street, and I see that he's standing in front of his house. And just as I'm about to break, I'm out of there. I look, and in the driver's seat is this guy with, like, black curly hair and this confetti-colored seersucker suit. <coughs> he stops, swings the door open, he's a friend of Frank, and they get in my Lamborghini and drive away. <laughs> Sandra? Sandra, why aren't you successful even in your own fantasies? <laughs> Which makes way for fantasy number three, the reality sequence. Frank falls in love with another woman. Pew! Oh, there she is. She's petite. <laughs> Whitney! <laughs> but her head is only about that big. <laughs> and she's got a ton of hair, like a ton of hair. And Frank has yet to go. <laughs> Next shot, we see they're in profile at the dining room table. There's candles, wine goblets. There's a star filter on this, you know, that makes your eyes go ping, ping. Candles, ping, ping, ping. He's looking across the table into her good eye. <laughs> he extends his hand, and she drops her teeny little hand in his. He guides her around the dining room table towards the bedroom. Well, why don't you follow them, Sandra? You're a sick, twisted masochist. <laughs> bedroom doors swing open. Heavy pink mist action coming in. He takes her in his arms, and he lays her down on the futon. You know, love on a budget. <laughs> and there they are. They're intertwined. They're caressing. They're kissing. And just as they're about to make love, 
he can't get it up. <laughs> and she's actually doing a beautiful imitation of the Sahara Desert. <laughs> We're having a heat wave. <laughs> Tropical heat wave. You know, I'm at the board. I'm feeling a little better. <laughs> and then the phone rings. Hello? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? Mm hmm. No, I wasn't doing anything. I was standing. No, I don't have a cold. <laughs> yes, I guess I can meet you in 15 if you like. Fine. <laughs> yeah, 15, fine. Fine, oh, bye. Okay, come on, come on, don't cry. No, please, let me cry. No, come on, come on, don't cry, don't cry. It's right there. Oh, it's right there. Oh, come on, let us out. Oh, you'll feel a lot better. And so I'm, I'm on my way to the restaurant, and I'm like shuffling and going, <laughs> and there's like heavy snot bubble action on this, you know. <laughs> my God loves beautiful, isn't it? So I get to the cafe door, I pull myself together. I open the cafe door, and there he is. He is sitting there. He's, he's wearing his head and everything. <laughs> he's waving like this at me and, and like motioning me towards him like that, me. So I go and I sit across from him. Now, whenever I don't want to cry, I jam my thumbnail into my first finger, <laughs> reasoning that this teeny pain will offset the anguish I am having in my whole body. <laughs> it does not. So we're sitting there and he says, hi. Oh, hi. God, it's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> says, um, you know, uh, these past two weeks have been really hard on me. <laughs> Says, you know, uh, I, you know, I'd be somewhere and uh, I'd see something and I'd think, oh, oh, Sandra would really love to see this, and of course, you weren't there. Or you know, sometimes late at night, if I couldn't get to sleep, I'd take long walks and. I'd see the light on in your living room, and I'd think, you know, maybe if I look in the window, I could see her. <laughs> and, uh, you know, these last two weeks, um, I've had a lot of time to think about us and I, r I really missed you. And I know I, I acted like a jerk. I got stuff I need to work out, but you know. You know, I, listen, I have no right to ask, but is there any way you can see past what happened and maybe give us another try? Yes! <laughs> well, I like to think I hesitated a millisecond on that. <laughs> so we talked and talked and talked and talked, and the waitress came by, I put my brain on her tray. <laughs> We drank coffee after coffee after coffee, and Frank finally said, listen, do you want to go for a walk? <laughs> so we went walking. It was one of those like amazing autumn nights where you have to like dig your hands really deep so you can keep warm. We walked and talked for like hours, and finally we found ourselves in front of my house. 
Well, listen, Frank, um, do you want to come in and uh, have a coffee? <laughs> and he said, yeah, sure. So we went in the house, and we're standing in the living room. Like, our coats are on and everything. It's an incredibly awkward moment. So Frank finally says, listen, you know, why don't we, why don't we just see what's on TV? And I went, yeah, OK. And we both reached down for the converter at the very same time, and our hands touched. <laughs> Frank says, last one to the bedroom is a dirty run neck. Pew! Naked bodies going this way, coats going this way. We run into the bedroom and we do a <laughs> skating stop at the bed. Because we're Canadians. <laughs> and the bed has fresh sheets. I just did the laundry. Sometimes God says yes. <laughs> And so he stayed the night, and we made wild, amazing, weasel-like love. <laughs> and he slept with me. <laughs> he had an early morning meeting, and he had to go. So I was laying in bed, you know, in that warm, rosy glow that only women really know. And I was, you know, far away from the cuddle puddle. <laughs> Can I continue at all? And you know, I was thinking how happy I was and how happy I was that my boyfriend was back, you know? And so I sat up in bed to start my day and I looked down on the floor and there in the corner of the bedroom is his dirty underwear. And I thought, oh yeah, I get it. My boyfriend's back and there's going to be laundry. <sighs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, 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 thank you. Take care of each other. I'll see you next year.